Hello, 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 everybody. Hope that you're doing well. Um, you read the title of this video, so let's get into it. All right. Um, it's a lot going on in the land. Yes, it is. Okay. In the land of the living, probably land of the dead too, but it's a lot going on. And what we're going to address in this video is how the narcissist or the children of wrath, because that's what they are, um, how they need you, okay? Firstly, understand one thing. If you take nothing from the video, take this from the video. Darkness clings to light. It's not the other way around. Pe people of the light, people of God, don't find darkness and try to cling to it. No, but darkness clings to light. Therefore, you'll find that your person, your narcissist, your child of wrath, it's always never done with you. They, they always want to come back if they've ghosted. They always want a, a way back in. So keep that in mind. Darkness clings to light, all right? Um, also, some of y'all, stop your own misery. Stop your own misery by disconnecting. Go cold turkey. No communication. This person or these persons have already shown you who they are, what they're about, what they're capable of. So you need to believe it. There's a verse in the Bible, um, Proverbs 27, um, 12. It says, a prudent man foreseeth the evil. So they see the evil before and they hide themselves or hide himself. But the simple pass on and they're punished. Basically what this says, a prudent man, a prudent man or woman, can foresee that this person, this situation is not good for me. It's evil. I need to hide myself. I need to go away. I need to put a separation between me and these people or this particular person. But simple people who wants to give the narcissist, the child of wrath, 30, 40, 50, 100, 200 chances, they are punished. You are pun you, you break your own heart. You set yourself up for failure if you're trying to do anything with the narcissist. If you're trying to, you know, uh, establish anything with them, you set yourself up for failure. You've already seen what the you foresee the evil. You've already you already know it. You see it yet and still. You you simply just pass on or you let it pass, and now you are punished. Okay, so take caution when these people show you who they are. Please believe it. Do not do not ever think that uh, they they're playing with me. I can change them. You know, if I'm nice to them, they'll be nice to me. They'll be nice to you for uh, not an extended amount of time, enough time so they can get what they want from you and then they'll discard. And then once when they go elsewhere, they'll come back to you and they'll do the same thing. They have a running cycle. This is what they do. This is what they like. This is what they're about. You can't change it. All you can do is separate and pray for the person. Not that they come back to you, not that you'll have a happy lasting marriage together or whatever you want with this particular person. Pray for their soul, okay? Pray for their soul. Uh, pray that they find God. Pray that they find uh, truth, okay? So so that's all you can do. Pray and, and whatever happens in the midst of you praying for them is what happens. If God brings you back together, great. Send me an invite to the wedding. But do understand, you don't control any of that. In the moment you think that you can separate and then pray for God to bring them back to you as a whole healed individual, well, firstly, is that God's purpose for them and then for you in your life? So maybe you should ask God, what's the purpose and the will for me having met this person so that you can then get some clarity, some truth, and you can operate in truth and not in what you want, but what you need. All right. So moving on. Um, yes, the light. The darkness clings to the light. They, so in psychology, they call it, you know, the narcissist needs a supply. The darkness clings to the light. You, you can't. Okay, so imagine this. Your narcissist, your child of wrath that you know, uh, whether it be more than one person, they all come together in cahoots. I mean, or not even cahoots, but let's just say we'll, we'll paint the picture or the scenario that all of the darkness, all the dark people move to a town over there and all the light people stay over here. 
Who's going to have a functioning, running, productive town? Ding, 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 ding. The light people, right? The darkness, they're going to they're, they're gonna be horrible to one another. That's all they can be to one another. They can be nothing more, okay? And, and probably nothing less. So what are they going to do? The dark people over here, the light people over here, you're going to see them running over here because the darkness clings to the light. They need a supply. They need betterment. They need to see what they aren't. They need to be around it so that they can try to tear it down. This is what the darkness does, okay? Um, it's like when you, maybe you said this before, maybe in your own time or maybe with a friend or whatever, you were just venting. You were like, man, I wish that person would go find somebody like them. Why did why they keep messing with me? Why did, why did they keep talking to me? Leave me alone. If they found, and which they probably have, found someone like them, um, you know, like repels. Okay. So they, they were both, they were able to see that they both were horrible and they were like oh, i don't know how long we can be horrible to each other before one of us kills one another or it, it just wasn't in it there's no supply there imagine them being with a person that treats them exactly how they treated you the light it's nothing there you can get nothing there it's dead so so they have to go and find you again or someone like you. But we'll get into a place. We get into the end of times. I don't believe that, you know, right now, right here, the next day, the next year. I don't believe and I don't have the date or the time. But but God says, no, the season. And the season is that we are getting to the end of times. So it's becoming very, um, um, very apparent. There's like a a, 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 a definite um, opening, a, um, a division of, of people of the light and people of darkness. And, and, um, there's a, there has been uh, a great awakening for people of the light for you to really understand what's going on. So you can understand the devices of the enemy, the device, the number one device of the enemy is to keep you distracted. It's to keep you, especially children of the light. It's to keep you focused on, um, trying to fix versus trying to understand your purpose, your will, um, here in life your God-given will, right? So the enemy wants you to be always focused on this or focused on that or trying to diagnose this person or understand this or why this happened to me or they don't want you focused on, hey, why am I here? What am I here to do? Who am I here to uplift? Because in uplifting someone else, you know, I find, I thrive. The enemy doesn't want you to know your place in the kingdom. So it's about keeping you focused on everything but. And the number one thing that we all focus on, um, that maybe you have focused on, put too much focus on, is a man or a woman or both. Um, so so um, what you want to do is start to detach from that and understand that this is a distraction, a ploy, a scheme, a plot of the enemy so that you never get to the place where God can really use you mightily in this earth and in the next, right? So, um, th so keep that in mind too. Some of these narcissists and all this stuff, you know, and new age and the esoteric, it tells you, oh, they were brought into your life. So you can learn this karmic lesson and then you can do this and then you'll find this. And then there's your twin flame. Come out of that. Come out of that. Come out of that. It only begets more confusion, right? Because if I feel like somebody's my quote unquote twin flame, then I feel like there's, um, you know, I have to be with this person, come hell or high water. Um, I have to be with this person, even though they treat me horribly. Horribly, I have to be with this person, you know, even though it just seems like it's, it's going against the grain. Some of this was just meant to confuse and to derail, okay? And to put you in a place where you'll always be chasing after, all right? And remember that um, that scripture, Proverbs, a prudent man foreseeth the evil, because we know the evil people over here, we see that evil, and we hide ourselves, we go the other way. But a simple person just passes on, like, do, 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 and then they're punished. At what point do you start pointing the finger at you? You keep letting this person come back to you, say, well, narcissists very, very rarely, um, Children of wrath very rarely um, apologize. If you get one apologizing to you, I don't know. You have to really, really um, question that 
And you really have to look at the fruit of that. And you really have to give that some time and see if it's real because they'll say anything to get back in. Because remember, if you take nothing from this video, the darkness clings to the light. So they need you as a supply, okay? Um, as a life supply, um, um, they need your goodness. They need you to build them up. They need you to say nice things to them. They need you to um, give them things or uh, be around or just be a good person. They like to feel, maybe they feel like they can, um, you know, you're their saving grace or uh, some, you know, some twisted uh, a way of thinking, but they also feel like they need you in their life to, um, to build them up also. And, and sometimes it's a love-hate relationship yeah they may love you but they also hate you because you're different and you're not like them and uh, you have so much to offer to the world and to other people and even to them and, and they don't have that they don't possess that so it's like oh uh, it's like uh, i love them but i hate them uh, so i'm going to treat them the way that i treat them i'm going to be off and on i'll be hot and cold i'm going to be temperamental i'm going to be have the mood swings i'm going to be nice one day and nasty the next i'm going to talk to them one week and not talk to them the next this is somebody, anytime there's confusion, we know what that is. That's the enemy. For God is not a God of confusion. Okay? So, so anytime you're finding yourself confused, especially dealing with a particular person, we already know, okay, this is the device and the ploy of the enemy. You don't have to sit and wonder. You don't have to sit and think about, oh my gosh, what is this? Um, what? Uh, uh, nope, this is the device of the enemy. Okay, and keep in mind, manipulation is um, it's it's like witchcraft. You know, if I if I'm especially manipulating you or, or people or anything to get what I want, that's witchcraft. You don't do that. If you want something from somebody, you tell them, and they'll give it to you or they won't. But you don't try to um, you don't try to change the scheme of things so that then this person feels like. Oh, well, what you said, uh, what you're proposing is a good idea. That's manipulation. It wasn't an original thought of mine. It wasn't, um, it didn't come from me. It came from you doing something, saying something, presenting something a certain way so that I could then follow along. That's witchcraft. That's bait and switch. You know, that's promising and that's dangling carry. This is it's, it's got to go. Pray it away and tell that person, go away. Every time you confuse me, that's of the enemy. Tell them that. They're going to be so confused as to what you just said to them. But tell them, every time you want to play this confusing game, I know where that's coming from. That's of the enemy, the devil, the adversary, Diablo, whatever you want to call them. So you go back over there and you play with them. When you want to come to me straight and you want to come to me right, then, um, you know, we can talk. But until then, move, move, go. And, and, and don't be afraid to cut these people off, okay? These people do not respect people who will not cut them off, okay? If you are the person that's like, oh, I don't want to cut them off. I don't. I, I may never get them back. They may never talk to me. I may never get another person like this. Are you crazy? No, it's a legitimate question. Now, listen, you have to be, if you can't, in life, you have to be able to pivot, in every facet of life, if you are running a business and you're in year three of the business and it's not profitable, okay, statistically, three to five years, businesses are not profitable, but it depends on the type of business, right? Um, let's say, okay, let's, let's stretch it. Now you're in year six, so we can get out of the statistics, right? You're in year six of your business. It is barely profitable. You barely can pay your bills, right? Um, are you going to keep doing the same thing that you've been doing those past six years? Or are you going to try to pivot? Are you going to try to move away from, or are you going to try to make some adjustment? Okay. If you're still getting the same thing from the narcissistic person, but you had, you will not pivot. You will not change. You will not let go. You will not let up. You will not disconnect. You will not stop communicating. Then this is on you. Then this is on you. And then the, the ones who say, okay, I keep meeting the same person over and over again. Well, you're unhealed. You haven't gone to God. Have you gone to God? Fell up upon your face and asked God, what is this about, Lord God? Um, firstly, what is this about me meeting the same person over and over again? And then secondly, Lord God, 
Is this, it is when you meet a new person, is this a person for me, God? I mean, really go before him and pray those, those prayers and wait for an answer. And if you don't get one, pray it again. It, the Bible says, uh, pray without ceasing. Have you really taken a step back from your life and really let God take control? No, you haven't. You go out, you think you're going to help God out. You put on your nice dress, you put on your nice suit and you go out and you meet somebody and it's Oh, this might be the one because I listened to a tarot card reading or I listened to this or I listened to that. Um, I looked at my horoscope and said I would meet some. No, God doesn't need help and he doesn't work like that. What he does is he understands that you want companionship, but he also is a God that sees all and knows all. So he may know that you need to fix something within you. So he may be wanting to get you to a place of separation so that he can illuminate in you what is not right, what needs to be fixed, and so that he can heal you. So when that one person, that one person known as the twin flame and esoteric, that one person that he made divinely for you, when you when he does put you together, you stay together. You are together. There are no problems, no no major ones outside of what should, what are we going to eat tonight? You know, there are no issues. God is not going to set you up for a failure. If he gave you your personnel, you would fail, crash and burn. We serve an intelligent God. We don't serve a genie in the sky that says, oh, you want a husband? Even though you're not a wife, you are not wife material. You want a wife, but you are not husband material. Yeah, I'll give you that. No. Fall upon your face and pray as to why. What is going on, God? Why hasn't it happened for me? Why am I meeting this person? Why was this person put in my life? Why were they sent? Are, are, are they a child of wrath? Most times the answer is going to be yes. Um, it's not for you to try to orchestrate what God um, needs to do with certain people in your life. Like, well, God, um, make this person be a better person so that we can get together and we can be together forever and we can get married and have children. And uh -uh. That's, That ain't how it works. Go to God humble, understanding that um, you play a part in all of this too and start asking what part you play in it and what should you be learning from it? And how can, how can this situation, uh, situationship relationship bring you closer to him? So that's what, so that's what this is guys. Um, do know that these narcissists will always come back. These children of wrath, they will always come back. The darkness clings to the light. It's going to be hard getting rid of them and saying, why do they keep coming back? If they keep coming back. Then they must love me or they must want me. Honey, if you want to be that naive and, and swing it that way, then go right ahead. But let me read this to you one more time. It says, a prudent man foreseeth the evil. Okay, I saw that you um you um you ghosted me for six months and now you're back. And hideth himself. So what I'm going to do is hide myself. I'm not going to answer that text message because... I know what you want. And, um, but the simple, oh my God, he's back. Oh my God, she's back. They're punished again. You glutton for punishment. This is what is going to happen. And you already know it. You foresee it. If you're wise, if you're prudent. Okay. So be prudent, be wise, foresee the evil. When they come back, when they discard and then they come back and then they run and then they do, or they make you chase, understand what it all is. It's a diversion. It's a derailment of the enemy. So you're never really asking real questions of God, of, of what, you're, what you're really here to do, to, to um, bring about, uh, who you're really here for in terms of companionship. All you're doing is chasing after somebody who just loves the chase, honey, and they'll die doing it. And you'll die never fulfilling the purpose and the will for your life from God. One thing I learned reading the Bible was um, that when we die, we remember the conversations that we had while we were living. We all know, um, we all know about hell, but I imagine that's that's a that's a that's a mental hell to know and remember the conversations you had while living about a savior about these people who mean you no good 
about the wheat and the tares, and you remember all of that. And you're on the other side of life, eternal life, knowing that you could have done differently. Don't, don't do that. Today, this day, accept Christ in your life. We all need a savior, okay? Do that first and understand why these people are in your life and why they keep running to you, okay? Because, you know, hopefully you are a child of the light. There might be some narcissists, some children of wrath watching, and maybe you want to perpetrate and, you know, um, infiltrate. But uh, you'll be found out too. Um, you can't be good for too long. Uh, so so uh, this is what I have for you. If you would like for me to pray with you about anything, you can um, reach me by email, okay? And we'll set something up and uh, we'll get on the ball, okay? So thank you. Many blessings to you. Uh, take care. Bye.